Welcome back to our writing project, Writing a Non-Chronological Report, Lesson 8. So, last lesson we looked at how to write the behaviour section of our non-chronological report. You should have written this in your books, and today you're going to be editing your writing, just as we would in class. Now, the whole point of editing is you are improving. You are looking for mistakes that you have made, such as spelling mistakes, missing words, missing punctuation, but you're also looking for, can you add something in? So you might decide you can think of a better word for something. Um, you might decide that you could add in a fronted adverbial. I'm going to guide you through the editing process. Now, if you don't have your non-chronological report in front of you and a pen, go press pause and go and get it now. If you do have it or you've now got it, let's talk through the steps. So, number one. Have you used capital letters and full stops at the end of sentences? If you mentioned a country or a place, for example, Africa, did you use a capital letter? So, you're going to check your non-chronological report for just that capital letters and full stops. Press pause and when you've done that, come back. Okay, number two. Have you used commas in lists? Let's look at my example. Lions hunt, gazelles, comma, zebras and wildebeest. Now, we don't have a comma before the and here. We have just a comma. If you have three things, it's between there. If I had another animal, for example, um, maybe they hunt giraffes. I know they hunt baby giraffes. So, yeah, you can have an extra comma here. But again, you don't have it before the and. Finally, if you've got more than two adjectives, you should have a comma. Look at this. Females build narrow, comma, deep burrows. So we've got a comma between narrow and deep. Press pause and check for commas and then come back. Okay, number three. Have you used commas before or after subordinate clauses? So take a look at this sentence here. Lions hunt gazelles. Now this is a relative clause because it's got which. So if it's like which, where, who, whom, then we use a comma. Lines hunt gazelles, and then the witch bit is about the gazelles, which try and escape by sprinting at high speed. So if you have got any relative clauses like that, you need a comma. And then also look at this, sent this subordinate clause. Although they have no predators, comma, hyenas sometimes try and steal their kills. So reread your work. If you've used a subordinate clause, then you need to have commas, press pause, and then come back for number four. Number four, have you used fronted adverbials followed by a comma? Now, I've given some examples here. There are loads of them, but if you haven't used any, you could steal one or two of these. Amazingly, comma. Now, you can only use that if the fact you're talking about is something amazing. Again, with interestingly, only use it if it's something interesting. Famously, comma, if something is well known. So, for example, in my example, I said famously, lions are very dangerous. However, so if you've given a sentence and then you want to say but, you want to give an example against it, you'd use however. And this one, like other mammals or reptiles or birds, so, like other mammals, lions feed their young on milk. Like other reptiles, crocodiles hatch from eggs. Like other birds, eagles uh, lay their eggs in a nest. If you are going to add in a fronted adverbial, you need to make sure that you get rid of the capital letter of the sentence you add it to, because it will, unless it's um, a name of a country or a person, it will no longer need a capital letter. So press pause, check for fronted adverbials, check for commas, and if you have none, can you add one in? Number five, 
Do your sentences make sense? You should, as I do, read each sentence aloud and stop at the end of each sentence and ask yourself, does it make sense? Have you missed any words out? Have you used the wrong tense? Are there any other problems? So carefully read through your work. It would be brilliant if you could read it to someone else and they can then listen to it. But if you try and read it in your head, what happens is your brain puts in the changes. You will, It will put in a missing word. But if you read it out aloud, especially to another person, that's when you will notice any mistakes. So press pause and check your work makes sense. Number six, is your handwriting neat? If you know that you can do better, then you should copy it out again, like we do in publishing. And the same thing goes for if you've made a lot of changes. You could then write it out in neat, and I would love to see those finished examples that have been changed and written in neat. Okay, now that is our final point, and this is our last lesson on our animal non-chronological report. So, thank you for taking part in this lesson. I will look forward to seeing your finished examples and I will see you next time.